Okay, so now let us come to a very fundamental question is about what is the point of having computers, right? What exactly do they do? Uh, it's nice to see that slide where I talked about robots or drones or uh, anything for that matter. Uh, but what is common, as I told you, they have an internal unit called a processing unit and that processing unit has a task, right? And uh, what is the uh, task of those computers? Why do we need computers? So the answer to that question is basically to solve problems. And I'm going to introduce you to what a problem could look like to a uh, computer or wh what, what kind of problems are we talking about. So it has to be a problem that is uh, computational, right? Uh, you have to uh, kind of understand what is the difference between a computational problem and a non-computational problem. Uh, so for example, writing a poetry uh, might not be a computational problem. Uh, often it could be in if you talk about all these recent things like chat GPT and so on. But uh, in a conventional sense, uh, drawing a picture or uh, writing a poetry or more uh, things like that uh, is not going to be uh, considered a computational problem. Whereas uh, if you want me to add uh, 1 billion numbers, uh, that is a computational problem, although it is hectic. but a computer would be able to do it uh, or for example take this uh, um, illustration here which basically shows a cannon which is going to fire a uh, cannon ball right so this was a very common computation that was needed in the early days of computers uh, while this world wars were being fought uh, they wanted to know the exact trajectory of a cannon ball and what velocity and what angle uh, this cannonball has to be fired, let's say, to hit an aeroplane, right? Uh, some fighter jet or something that is uh, flying, right? So, so for that, what you will definitely need is that maybe you have some idea about what is the wind speed that is coming. Uh, there are some parameters. What what should be the angular uh, elevation of that cannon uh, uh, firing system? Uh, what should be the velocity uh, this uh, cannonball is fired, uh, how how large, because it's uh, not an ideal system, of course, uh, you will have wind resistance and so many different things. What is the height of this uh, particular uh, aeroplane that is flying? What is the velocity of this plane that is, uh, so velocity of the uh, plane? So there are so many different factors that has to be uh, integrated into this problem, uh, which is not as simple as you have studied in your probably uh, plus uh, uh, two kinematic class, uh, which was more like an idealized system, right? But this is a system which is uh, really going to be deployed in a war field and you cannot really miss uh, what it is meant to do, right? So typically these kind of things require enormous amount of computation and uh, computers were used to solve this kind of problems right to as sophisticated things as the things like google search and so on uh, which is going to work on billions and billions of documents right so uh, starting from uh, things like solving an equation or a set of equations to uh, things like google search all of these are uh, computational problems okay and a computer's job is to uh, solve such problems okay so but if you ask again a fundamental question about how these problems are actually solved in a computer, because computers, as we see, they do not have any clue of the real world. They do not know what are cannons, they do not know what is a velocity, they do not know what is an angle, wind resistance, velocity of planes, nothing they know, right? Or documents, all these things has to be uh, somehow abstracted out to a computer, right? And the only thing that the computer can do is orchestrating electrons, right? They do not know anything else. A fundamental building block of a computer or a computing system or a computing device is how, uh, it's based on how their capability of orchestrating electrons, right? There is absolutely nothing else uh, that a computer really understands if you really think fundamentally, okay? So this brings us to uh, 
this question that how do problems get solved by electrons that is at the fundamental level how all this massive amount of computations are really done. Uh, this brings us to this picture uh, called this transformation hierarchy that is very important to understand uh, as a student of computer science or electrical engineering electronics or whoever is connected to this field. Uh, so basically electrons are the ones that are manipulated by some devices which are uh, called microelectronic devices and what are these microelectronic devices they basically uh, restrict the restrict or uh, kind of encourage the flow of electrons so typically these are things that you have studied probably called transistors or diodes etc right so these are these microelectronic devices uh, that can control the flow of electrons or can orchestrate the flow of electrons and on top of this microelectronic devices we build things called circuits right so these uh, transistors or diodes and all these things are used for creating circuits and along with these circuits uh, we also have this assumption that we are going to have a construct of digital circuits right so these circuits that we are going to talk about are called digital circuits that is going to manipulate information or store information or retrieve information those are digital in nature we are going to come into uh, the details much more uh, so this is some kind of a uh, not a continuous information but a discretized information uh, or a limited or finite pre precision of information okay and the principles uh, that will be used uh, to manipulate digital data uh, is going to be the digital logic the logic that we are going to use to design this uh, circuits to process digital information is going to be the so that we can create digital circuits they are going to use uh, make use of digital logic okay and after that what we once we have the circuits uh, ready and we have the digital logic so that we can run uh, digital information processing can be done on the circuits right suppose you have a bunch of bits and you can process those bits maybe uh, take two sets of bits and add them right or two sets of bits uh, and multiply them of course in some uh, order uh, or some kind of a uh, grammar has to be there to tell you what is the most significant bit what is the less significant bit and so on but you have a logic uh, that will help you to manipulate those bits or do some computation and execute them in the digital circuit on top of that you have what is called a micro architecture once you know that okay these are the various logical building blocks of your system how can you uh, integrate multiple such logical blocks to create something which is more generic right so micro architecture here refers to the architecture of a computing system that is going to execute a basic set of tasks okay it could be addition it could be multiplication it could be some logical operations uh, it could be uh, some bit operations and so on that is going to constitute of the micro architecture of the computing system right so this is what uh, we typically refer to as a computer right uh, more of a general purpose computer you might have a computing system that does not require a general purpose computer let's say you take an image uh, and you are only interested to change the brightness or some clarity of that image and this is a very fixed kind of operation for that you might not need a full blown computer maybe you need some digital logic that is going to uh, be implemented using digital circuits that's all okay so sometimes we have digital systems which is just going to be till here where we implement digital logic on uh, and we basically make them happen uh, or kind of implement them using the digital circuits and this is more of a general purpose computer where uh, you can pretty much do a lot of computational tasks, right? General purpose computational tasks on this uh, micro architecture. So then you have things like hardware and software interface because once you create this computing system, uh, what you need is to have a control on this computing system. So you have the underlying hardware, uh, which is a set of 
logical circuits, right? Uh, hardware and you need to program them. You need to use them at your own for your own needs, for your own computational needs. So for that, uh, there is a clearly defined boundary in between the computing, uh, in between the underlying hardware computer and the uh, software. Software will be a piece of code that you are going to write and you want to want them to be executed on the computer, right? So we are going into uh, going to come into those details uh, later as we go on over the course. And after that, you have the system software like compilers, operating systems that are going to manage various things within the hardware. For example, a part of the hardware could be reserved for storing data, right, which is called memory. And the work of the system software is going to manage that memory. Some part of the memory is going to be used by your uh, data, the user data. Some part of the memory is going to be used by hardware devices that are uh, connected or interfaced to your computer, right? For example, a computer could be having some sensor and the sensor data has to be stored in the local memory of the computer. So all these things has to be managed by some entity, some typically some software entity. Uh, and this, this is basically the task of the operating system which is going to be covered in the future course of your uh, studies. So this is about a system software and then on top of that you have the traditional uh, computing related tools, for example, programming languages where you have a high level program uh, that you can write which is going to be eventually executed on a given micro architecture, right? And then you have things, of course, things like algorithms and computational problem to start with, right? So if you look into the flavors uh, of these various topics or this uh, higher levels of abstraction that I call or the transformation hierarchy, we do start with so really solving problems by manipulating electrons or orchestrating electrons. And on the other end of the spectrum, uh, you have a computational problem, right? That you need an algorithm to solve. Uh, right? Let's say you want to sort uh, in numbers, right? That's a computational problem and based on your choice, you could say that I want to use uh, uh, bubble sort, I want to use a quick sort and so on. Those are algorithmic uh, implementation or algorithmic uh, approaches to your computational problem and then somebody has to sit down and write a program that a computer could interpret. Right? You want to write down a program for bubble sort. Right? So you have to use a certain programming language, the pseudocode is not going to work. You have to uh, kind of respect the syntax and the semantics of that language, compile that program. Right? So I can just uh, write down if you want to solve this problem of uh, bubble sort. Right? Uh, it could be any uh, uh, bubble sort, I would say uh, that is more of an algorithm. So uh, I would like, I would like uh, kind of say this is a sorting problem. So say sort in numbers. This is your computational problem, right? And this computational problem trickles down this uh, hierarchy or these abstractions that we have created and eventually get solved by orchestrating maybe billions of electrons, right? So computational problem here is sorting of n numbers and then you have candidates, right? Here you, I want to use bubble sort. Somebody wants to use quick sort, right? You need to implement that. Let's say you want to implement it in C++ or you want to implement it in Python and so on. So these are high level programming languages where you can uh, actually implement the programming logic or actually implement the logic that has been stated in the algorithm. Okay, Then you compile the program and it uh, creates based on what kind of you are using an interpreted language or uh, what kind of language you have been using based on that you are uh, going to get an object file or some byte code or an uh, executable right which is going to be taken up by the operating system. You are going to know more about operating system in future. Uh, course of your uh, studies and this is the operating system that will take care of that executable that you have created and uh, pass it on to the lower levels of the hardware, right, where it is going to give it up to the, give it on to the uh, underlying micro architecture to 
for execution right and then it can come back to your uh, memory or it will be written uh, to your display output uh, whatever you want right however you intend so this is typically the transformation hierarchy and if you see on the top the purple color uh, refers to the traditional computer science discipline whereas the electronic devices or the electrons and the digital circuits the traditional e uh, wherever we look into the bridge right which is typically called computer engineering uh, or mostly systems engineering uh, which is a bridge in between the traditional cs and the e discipline so whatever we are going to study is typically going to be uh, covering most of this yellow part uh, not really uh, the system software which is again going to be taken up as a separate course uh, operating systems or networking and so on but we, we are going to cover most of this right uh, the architectural details the organization of a computer and how do you build uh, digital logic circuits right and we are going to assume uh, certain things about uh, some uh, abstractions about how the circuits work we are not really going to go into the implementation of the circuits using transistors or diodes so that is something that we are uh, resting our belief on and based on those uh, constructs or those abstractions we are going to develop logic okay so just to keep that in your mind and beyond electrons what is what is there this quantum mechanics right so uh, this is how your physics uh, meets the uh, traditional electrical engineering discipline. So this is the entire uh, uh, hierarchy, the transformation hierarchy. So it will be nice when you uh, kind of execute your next algorithm to think about this transformation hierarchy to at least appreciate what is going on, right? Starting from your compilation to your operating system taking over the code and uh, giving it to your underlying micro architecture uh, the digital circuits taking over and manipulating like lots of uh, transistors inside your system and those transistors controlling or orchestrating the flow of electrons so this is your entire uh, again this is a superficial picture but at least it gives you uh, it gives you an idea about the flow or the different layers of abstraction okay so uh, please keep this in your mind and uh, this will be helpful to kind of get the grasp of the stack.